think that this is really one of the most exciting finds in Egyptology. We did announce today the discovery. Egyptian archaeologists have unearthed yet another major find in the Nile city of Luxor. The dead do not speak. This is a well-known statement that has recently been challenged by strange archaeological findings in Luxor. Luxor has always been a place of archaeological interest, and in a secluded royal tomb on the outskirts of the city, some mummies have been discovered with shocking expressions. Today on Crunch, we'll be talking about the insane discovery of the screaming mummies. In 1886, Egyptologist Gaston Maspero discovered the screaming mummy in a royal tomb in Deir al-Bahari. Deir al-Bahari is a burial complex near Luxor, Egypt, where priests secretly bury members of the royal family to deter robbers. Although the screaming mummy was found in a tomb surrounded by 50 other royal mummies and over 6,000 artifacts, its tomb was unidentified. Due to this mystery of its identity, the mummy was dubbed Unknown Man E. However, it wasn't just the mystery that made Maspero interested in Unknown Man E, it was also its appearance. At first glance, Unknown Man E has a screaming expression, making it seem like he experienced pain at the time of his death. However, after studies had been carried out on the mummy, it was discovered that Unknown Man E didn't endure pain at the time of his death. Apparently, his head fell back after his death and his jaw dropped, making it appear like he had been screaming for all eternity. Apart from the facial expression, archaeologists were able to point out other odd features of Unknown Man E. For example, the mummification process wasn't carried out correctly, and the materials used for the burial showed how rushed and impromptu the burial plan was. The unusual features of this mummy attracted a decent amount of attention when it was discovered. However, since Egyptologist Bob Breyer came up with the hypothesis that this mummy was Pentaur, son of Ramesses III, it has become more famous. Subsequent tests have supported this theory and proved that the mummy is that of Pentaur. The mummy's DNA and Y chromosome share significant similarities with that of Ramesses III. However, why would a prince of Egypt be buried under the most unlikely circumstances? Pentaur's unusual mummy wasn't the first or last screaming mummy to be discovered. In 1881, in the royal cache of Deir al-Bahari, the same place Pentaur's mummy was discovered, the first screaming mummy was discovered. Intrigued by its uniqueness, the archaeological team retrieved the mummy, who they thought to be a princess of ancient Egypt, between the 15th and 20th dynasties. Her coffin was labeled, the royal daughter, the royal sister of Mered Amon. However, her identity was still a debatable topic, because there were other princesses in Egyptian history who bore the name Mered Amon. The origin of this mystery woman was not really investigated further until the discovery of Pentaur's mummy about five years later and archaeologists saw the need to compare these similar mummies. It wasn't until recently that Egyptologist Zahi Hawass and Cairo University professor of radiology Sahar Salim decided to re-examine the unknown woman A. After a series of tests, Hawass and his team discovered that the woman died in her 60s from atherosclerosis of the coronary artery, which led to a sudden heart attack. According to Hawass, she died in the same position she was embalmed in, with her legs crossed, but as for the screaming expression on her face, she didn't die this way. Hawass believes that the princess was alone at the time of her death, and her head tilted to the side and her jaw dropped, just like Pentaur. They also assume that she wasn't discovered until a few hours after when rigor mortis set in. Thus, her facial expression and body posture was maintained for over 3,000 years. CT scans showed that the woman's organs were not extracted, the scan shows that her brain shrunk post-mortem and occupied the right side of her skull due to the inclination of her head. Dr. Zahi Hawass and Dr. Sahar Salim, who had studied the different methods of embalming throughout ancient Egypt, deduced the identity of the unknown woman from how she was embalmed. The lack of brain extraction showed that it might have been Mered Amun, the daughter of King Sekhenenre of the end of the 17th dynasty, rather than Mered Amun the daughter of King Ramesses II from the 19th dynasty. Pentaur was the son of Ramesses III, the second pharaoh of the 20th dynasty in ancient Egypt, and his second wife Taiyi. 
Ramesses III appointed Ramesses IV, a son he had with his first wife, Queen Tidy, as his successor based on spiritual directions. This decision did not sit well with Pentaur's mother and many court members, so they planned a coup. They planned to end the king and Pentaur would become king instead. The CT scan of Ramesses III showed that he had a deep cut through his throat which was very fatal. This fatal injury which led to the death of the king proved that the assassination attempt was successful. This incident was recorded in history as the Harem Conspiracy. Despite the success of the plan to kill the king, the plan to put Pentaur on the throne of Egypt in place of his father was unsuccessful. Ramesses IV, the designated successor, had the support of most members of the royal family. They possibly caught wind of the harem conspiracy before the perpetrators could cause any harm to Ramesses IV. Ramesses set up a panel of 12 magistrates saddled with the responsibility of investigating and judging the case. Queen Taiye, Pentawar, and other conspirators, and even those who knew about the plot but didn't say anything, were punished. In total, about 30 people were incinerated because of treason. Pentaur's royal status was considered during the trial, and he was sentenced to death in the end. This was a less humiliating verdict than being incinerated and having his ashes spread on the streets like other offenders. It was an ancient belief that one could not experience the afterlife without one's body, so being incinerated emphasized the degree of treason a criminal committed. In Egyptian culture, the dead were preserved through the process of mummification. The point of this preservation was to keep the body relatively intact for as long as it took the soul of the dead person to travel to the afterlife. So not only were they killed in the physical world, they were destroyed by fire, and they were denied the afterlife experience. Pentaur's sentence was lenient considering that he wasn't condemned to suffer a complete personal obliteration. And although his death was not fitting for a member of the royal family, he could be mummified and have access to the afterlife. Experts believe Pentaur died by poison, and shortly after his death, a person of high influence convinced the magistrates to allow him to bury the deceased prince instead of openly exposing his body to decay. After discovering the screaming mummy, Gaston Maspero said, All those who saw him firsthand thought that he looked as though he had been poisoned the contraction of the abdomen and stomach, the desperate movements with which the head is thrown back, the expression of pain spread over the face hardly allow for any other explanation. The burial plans for Pentaur were obviously not planned, so there were a few loose ends. As aforementioned, mummification was a 70-day process that primarily involved desiccation and embalming tasks and the quality of the mummification depended on the buried person's social status. For wealthy and royal Egyptians, the process was carried out by the priest. The body was first washed and purified, and then priests would begin the process of organ extraction. The organs were removed to prevent decay and ensure the body lasted as long as possible. However, organ extraction differed depending on the level of wealth of the deceased. Generally, the heart was the only organ that wasn't extracted because it was believed that the heart was the center of consciousness and essence of a person, and it was important still to have those on the journey to the afterlife. Those that couldn't afford organ extraction were just rinsed with solvents and left to dry for up to 70 days before they were buried. Organs were extracted through one of two means. For wealthier clients, the priests would make an incision in the side of the abdomen through which they remove the organs in the thoracic and abdominal cavities. The other option was to inject a chemical into the body which caused the liquidation of the organs. This liquid was then drained out. After organ extraction, the priests would further dry the body using natron, which was essentially baking soda. Packets of natron were placed on the body and inside the body cavity to drain any more moisture. Afterward, they would wash the body with perfumes and oils and embalm it in strips of fine linen. Although Pentaur was a member of the royal family, he was improperly mummified. His mummification process was not sponsored by the royal family or conducted by the priests. In fact, his mummification would have been conducted in secret because the magistrates were going to leave his body to decay without any funeral arrangements. All his organs were left intact and he wasn't embalmed. 
Instead, he was covered in sheep or goat skin, a practice considered unclean. This unclean practice was usually done to criminals. Unfortunately, Pentaur, a disgraced prince of Egypt, was buried under such circumstances. Because he wasn't embalmed, his body was not properly held in place, which allowed his head to fall back and his jaw to widen, giving him the expression of someone condemned to scream for all eternity. His hands and feet were tied up like a prisoner and bound so tightly that archaeologists saw very obvious marks on his bones. Ancient Egyptians believed the coffin of a person was the external dwelling place of those within it, so it wasn't an element of funerals they left there. The coffins of the members of the royal family were made of expensive materials and had elaborate designs and carvings. Coffins were rectangular boxes with flat lids. They were painted and inscribed in hieroglyphs and had four important features. The deceased's name and titles, a false door through which the deceased's soul could pass, a list of food offerings, and small openings through which the deceased could see outside the coffin. The embalmed body would be placed in the coffin on its left side, so its face would be directly lined up with the painted eyes on the coffin side. Afterward, the coffin would be placed in a sarcophagus carved to have an anthropoid shape and facial characteristics as the person placed within it. The sarcophagus of a pharaoh was usually decorated to depict the structures of the king's palace, the accomplishments of the pharaoh, spells from the Book of the Dead, which were instructions to navigate the afterlife, and things of that sort. The members of the royal family were also buried in this manner with elements this sophisticated. However, Pentaur was buried hurriedly in a coffin that wasn't even made for him. He was buried in a coffin made of cedar wood, which was too narrow to hold his remains and the interior was roughly hacked to widen it. The coffin bore no inscriptions, hieroglyphs, or paintings, and his name wasn't even inscribed on it. The only way Gaston Maspero and his team could tell that the unknown man E was a person of importance was through the burial complex and the kind of people that were buried in it, and the few pieces of gold jewelry he was buried in. Pentaur may not have been obliterated from existence, but he had no identity in the afterlife. Will more screaming mummies be discovered as time goes on? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching Crunch History, and as always, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more interesting facts about the past.